Xbox One and Windows 10 exclusive. Welcome to The Know, I'm Ashley Jenkins. I'm John Reisinger. Analysts have been predicting the end of generational consoles for a while, and usually we make fun of them mercilessly when they do it. But now even Microsoft is joining in, so maybe that's a little bit of egg on our face. <laughs> the company is now saying that the upcoming project Scorpio which sounds like something from G.I. Joe. I love that as a name. I didn't like it at first, but I've really come around. Uh, I may officially signal the finale and the final and all the other F words for Microsoft's console generations. <laughs> and when it's over, we find out it was all just a dream anyway. These latest comments come from an interview between Engadget and Aaron Greenberg, head of Xbox Games Marketing at Microsoft. So they discussed a number of pressing questions that gamers have about the Xbox brand in general, including whether or not Scorpio will have exclusive games, more on that later, and just what Microsoft's goals are for the most powerful console ever made. When asked directly if Microsoft considered Scorpio to be its last console generation, Greenberg replied, I think it is. For us, we think the future is without console generations. We think that the ability to build a library, a community, to be able to iterate with the hardware. We're making a pretty big bet on that with Project Scorpio. That sounds like a pretty definitive answer. So no more wondering if we'll ever get an Xbox 2, an Xbox 720, or an Xbox 1080. What are we gonna do for jokes? <laughs> I guess we'll just have to make fun of, we're, I don't know. We're gonna have to they try. They call it Scorpio, so that's giving us something. Well, that's a code name. We'll okay. see what they, what they end up calling it. Um, it sounds just like it's all going to be Scorpio until the end of time, or whatever its actual name ends up being. I, I always wish they'd just leave the project name. I liked Project was a Dolphin, there was a Revolution, and then what the Revolution became the Wii, and we were all like, that's dumb. Wasn't Dolphin like... I think the Dolphin was GameCube. GameCube. Yeah. So just in case you needed Greenberg to be even more specific, in case that quote wasn't enough, he did provide a follow-up quote just so you can be double extra sure about how final Scorpio is. Uh, Greenberg went on to say, we're basically saying this isn't a new generation. Everything you have continues forward and it works. We think of this as a family of devices. So thanks for summing it all up, Aaron. Full disclosure, I consider Aaron to be a good buddy. Okay. I've known him for like, 12 years, he's awesome. Yay, Aaron! Yay, Aaron! <laughs> it's been speculated for a while now that Microsoft is planning on jettisoning the current console model, which relies on generational hardware every, well, seven to eight years, sort of. All you can go as low as three, if you yeah. decide you don't like it, in favor of something more like the, say, Apple or smartphone model with iterative updates every couple of years or so. Uh, this is the first time Microsoft has directly spelled out that Scorpio is the chosen one to bring Xbox generations to a close, which is something that console gamers aren't really used to. Yeah, we're used to just one investment sticking with it. Elsewhere in the interview, Greenberg goes on to emphasize that for Microsoft, this new strategy is all about backward and forward compatibility. They want to be able to innovate without leaving compatibility behind for gamers. For them, the promise of Scorpio is that when you upgrade, all of your games will go with you. Which Why? is nice. Yeah. I mean, almost like having a Steam account. Sorry. <laughs> I just can't get over it. It's like, awkward. It's, it's, a, it's a PC. It is a PC. <laughs> that's, the, that's the basic thing is it's a PC, but you don't have to build it and everything will just work. Build mine. I had Adam do it. <laughs> it's true. He's good at that. Uh, why would Microsoft want to stop making generational hardware? Well, it's definitely not because consoles are bad business. In the same interview, Greenberg also said that the console market is really healthy. Console sales are doing well in general. Software sales are strong. So more than anything, this solidifies the idea that Microsoft's long-term play is to build an enormous ecosystem that spans all corners of gaming and not just home console. The rest of the interview even indicated as much with Greenberg highlighting all the ways gamers want to experience their games. The way Steam is synonymous with the master race, Microsoft and, uh, wants to be synonymous with all gaming. It's almost like the thing's already there, you can just use it. Um, across tablet, console, mobile, and PC. It's actually incredibly ambitious and pretty much only, impossible, only possible if you ditch the current console formula altogether and unify your console audience with the rest of your customers. Look on the bright side. Maybe this means that PC ports won't be so bad because even console developers will be working with different hardware configurations. Look, it's a distant hope, but- I, I would like that. PC gamers need something, because ports are getting bad. All right, so it would have been kind of helpful for them to lay out all these plans at one time and provide maybe a clear roadmap for what they're doing rather than these sort of confusing piecemeal statements they've made over the last few months. That would go, that would mean intent and actually a plan. Well, Microsoft's <laughs> like, failure is like one thing is that they're not good at talking usually. They like <laughs> over explain things or make them too technical and then everyone gets terrified. Just don't tell us stuff and we'll be fine. 
<laughs> uh, those confusing statements started all the way back in March when Phil Spencer made comments that the future of Xbox look, looked a lot more like PC, only to backtrack to the comments just a couple of weeks later. And that's not the only time the talking points received a little bit of scrutiny because they're Microsoft talking points. After the announcement of Scorpio 83, Microsoft got blasted by analysts who claimed that they'd basically killed the Xbox One S right out of the gate by announcing Scorpio at the same time. Then there have been all the criticisms from Epic CEO Tim Sweeney, who claims that Microsoft's attempts to unify their ecosystem are basically an attempt to monopolize and monopolize PC gaming. He even went as far as saying that Microsoft plans on sabotaging PC gaming slowly over time. Well, specifically Steam. And he's gonna do that. Yeah, so I, mean, he, what, I guess what he's saying is that uh, they would sabotage Steam, make it run, like not break it, but make it like run not so good, so people would be incentivized so good. to use the I run not so Windows good. Store to buy their <laughs> games instead. That is kind of I didn't what even know the Windows before. Store existed until, what was the quant, Quantum Break quantum game came break. out? I was like, I'm gonna buy this. You have to buy it on the Microsoft Store. Well, they've also switched it over. If you go to buy something on Xbox.com now, it takes you to the Microsoft Store. Oh. So they are, work, they are unifying all that stuff. But so far, Microsoft's done its best to answer the critics with its actions, which is good, because well, they've done a bad job talking about it. Uh, for one, they just announced that former Windows exclusive Quantum Break. Wow, I'm, I'm really good. We'll be getting its own Steam release. Hardly the move of somebody who wants to break Steam. As for the criticisms about killing their console sales, the Xbox One surprisingly outsold the PS4 in July. Uh, plus, the Xbox One S appears to be revitalizing their sales as well. Uh, they've already sold out the limited run of two terabyte white models, although it should be noted that we have no idea just how many they actually sold, just that the current stock has dried up. There were no numbers, just we had them another all gone forever. Five. So it makes it sound really good. So talk more like that. Yeah. Still, they seem to be executing where it matters. They just haven't really done a great job about communicating what the plans are. Uh, speaking of miscommunications, Greenberg also clarified the number of confusing statements Microsoft's been making about whether or not Scorpio will have exclusive games. Now this all started back at E3. First they said it would, then they said it wouldn't, then Phil Spencer just a couple of weeks ago said the developers were already working on Scorpio titles. Their messaging about Scorpio exclusives has been a little all over the place. So what's the verdict? Greenberg said that yes, Scorpio will have exclusive titles, however you shouldn't get those pitchforks out just yet, Xbox One owners, because the exclusives will be limited to VR. As to why they couldn't get their messaging straight, Greenberg says it's because Microsoft doesn't consider VR to be console gaming per se. Since VR is in its own class of hardware, he argues that their messaging of Scorpio not having any console exclusives is still accurate. Yeah, that, that's, that's shady. Uh, yeah. According to him, the main point Spencer was making when he said there would be no exclusives was to reassure Xbox One owners that they wouldn't be left behind. And really that's the key piece of the entire idea. Yeah, VR, no more console generations, a fully integrated platform. All these are part of a big bet that Microsoft is making about how gamers want to experience video games. Considering just how well the console market seems to be thriving at the moment without iterative hardware, it certainly looks like a big gamble from the outside, but a whole lot can change between now and holiday 2017 when Scorpio ultimately hits store shelves. So what do you guys think of Microsoft calling Scorpio their final generation of consoles? Let us know in the comments. For future Xbox Scorpio news, like this video and subscribe to the no words. We're, we're bad words. at this. Luna, come here. Luna, Bobby. Come here. You stay high to the camera. Dog. <laughs> this is, there's probably gonna be large jar jar here. snorty They discussed a number of pressing questions that gamers have. Fuck, I just like kept on reading. I just roll with it. You know, if you want to just read everything I'm supposed to read, you go for it. I'll be here and be eye candy. No, you're good. Do you want me to do it? You, yeah, you, you, you read your thing. It's I'll do it. I'll read my thing. Okay. All right, so it would have been helpful. Well, help, helpful. <laughs> All right, so it would have been helpful for the... I can't It's a hard why. word, it's a hard word. It's seven whole letters. There's an F somewhere in there. Yeah, all the, <laughs> all the F words. We talked about that earlier, but it's fine, because this would have interrupted us. It's not me. <clears throat> uh, he even went on as far... He, 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 it's he, not just me! He, he, he... he.